In December 2025, an American news agency called Reuters broke a story that basically nobody is talking about. And this is the single biggest threat to American tech dominance in the next decade. China just built one machine that literally every country in the world would kill to have. The one thing America said that they could never have it, the one technology that has complete monopoly. One company, no alternatives, nothing else in the market. And now China has it, or at least they are about to. And here's the wild part. It doesn't work yet. It's sitting in a lab. It's massive. It's broken in 10 different ways. And yet, somehow, this broken prototype in Shenzhen is the scariest thing China has ever built in the last 20 years. Because this is how they beat us at everything. Let me set the stage. Right now, as we are talking, there are only two countries that can make the most advanced computer chips on the planet. United States and Taiwan. That's it. Everyone else is basically playing catch up. India, you know the struggle. We have been trying to build a semiconductor industry for decades. Remember when the government announced Make in India for Chips? Come, Make in India. We invested, we tried, and we are still importing 95% of our semiconductors. That's frustrating, right? China looked at the same problem in 2019 and said, not for us. But there was one wall they couldn't climb, something called as EUE lithography. This is basically the magic machines that lets you crave tiniest of circuit onto silicon. We are talking about patterns 13.5 nanometers wide. That's like fitting 7,500 of them across a single human hair. The only company in the world making these machines, a Dutch company called ASML. They have a monopoly. So in 2019, the US basically said, no EUV machines for China. And that should have ended it. China was supposed to be on a setback by decade. China didn't almost build an EUV machine, they built one. It's sitting inside a high security lab in Shenzhen and it's already generating the actual light needed for the advanced chip making. Now, before you get too excited, let me be real. This thing is not ready for mass production. And that's not the shocking part. The shocking part is this was done in total secrecy. While the rest of the world kept on saying it's impossible, China mobilized over 3,000 engineers, researchers from Shanghai, Harbin and Beijing, basically from every major university. Everything coordinated under Huawei and backed by the government itself. And here is the irony. This is exactly how Manhattan Project began. For the ones who don't know Manhattan Project, during World War II, US quietly launched one of the most secret projects in the history, led by America and supported by UK and Canada. Almost nobody knew what they were building. The goal was simple, to build a first nuclear weapon before anyone else. It cost 2 billion back then, roughly 30 billions today. Overnight, the global power changed. Only a handful number of people saw the full picture, but the whole world felt the impact. Fast forward to today, China treated the EUV the same way and they got the results. Their light source is hitting 3.42 conversion efficiency. That's boring, right? Until you realize ASML is barely about that. To put that in perspective, in 2015, Chinese researchers couldn't even generate enough light to even measure. By 2025, they are almost hitting the commercial levels. For Indians watching this, imagine ISRO suddenly announced that they have built a quantum computer matching Google. That's the scale of shock here. This wasn't supposed to happen and yet it did. So how did they actually pull this off? There are a few reasons. First, they threw insane amount of money at it. The Chinese government has invested over $150 billion in semiconductor since 2014. That's four times what ASML makes in a year. In 2024 alone, China spent $50 billion on semiconductor equipments. For comparison, India's entire semiconductor industry is probably less than 10 billion a year. Second, and this is the clever part, they hired an ASML-owned people. There is a guy named called Lin Nan. 
He literally worked at the ASML as the head of light source technology. Five years of working there and learning all their secrets. And then he goes back to China, joins the Shanghai Institute of Optics and suddenly the China breakthrough happens. They are doing this systematically. They are offering salaries that literally says uncapped plus research grants of $560,000 and housing subsidiaries. We are talking about offerings from 400,000 to 700,000 just to join. It's poaching, but it's legal poaching. And the third thing, they are using reverse engineering with a system. They are literally having surveillance camera in their labs, filming people taking apart ASML machines and rebuilding them and documenting everything. They are treating knowledge transfers like a factory process. That's different from how Western companies work. We work with secrecy. They are working with a systematic documentation. One approach is more fragile, the other scales faster. Okay, let's be real. The machine is not actually making any chips yet. Here's the thing. Imagine you built a really powerful engine of a car. You got it working. But the engine is so precise, so freaky, that it's literally bigger than the whole car should be. That's China's situation right now. The machine works, but it's gigantic. Why? Because they are still figuring it out how to build the tiny, precise version that makes it all run smoothly. The machine's kind of weak too. It's literally having a car engine that goes 60 km per hour when it should go 400. It technically works, but it's not useful for actually driving anywhere. But that's just the machine problem. Here's the bigger issue. Even if China fixes the machine tomorrow, they still can't make the good chip with it. Their best chip making factory, SMIC, they are still messing up. When they try to make advanced chips, only 4 out of 10 actually works properly. TSMC's 8 to 9 out of 10 works and it costs China way more money to make the same chip. So imagine giving a Ferrari engine to someone who has only ever driven a motorcycle. Even with a great engine, they are going to crash it at first. Here's why this matters to India. Getting the machine is the only first step. Then you need to have the engineers, you need to have a big right factories, you need the suppliers for the tiny parts, you need years of practice. It's like how getting a flight simulator doesn't make you a pilot. So when does this become dangerous? Probably by 2030 and 2031. China is saying 2028, but let's be real, that's never on time. Right now, America has basically blocked China from buying the world's best chip. That's keeping China behind in AI. But if China can make their own advanced chip, those American rules don't matter anymore. The US loses its biggest weapon. And that's the race we are in. Can America keep China from getting good at chip making? Or will China figure it out before the window closes? Next 5 to 10 years will decide this. Here's the India part that matters. China didn't wait for anyone's permission. No one helped them. They said we are doing this through billions at it and actually did it. We have been talking about doing the same thing for semiconductor independence for decades and we are still talking about it. So what changes because of this? First, America's plan to keep China behind just got a deadline. They have got maybe five more years to make it work. After 2030, it probably won't matter what America bans because China would be making their own stuff anyway. Second, we are heading towards two different chip worlds. One with America and Taiwan making the super advanced stuff. One with China making the everyday stuff. That's actually fine. Both sides can exist, both make money, but neither dominates the other completely. And third, the biggest. China just proved that if you actually decide to do something and throw money at it, it can be done faster than anyone thinks. They didn't invent new science. They just said, we are doing this, gave billions and got the smartest people in the room and made it happen in six years. Now for India, this is the moment. We can either actually commit at chip making like China did or we can keep talking forever. That's the choice. We have got brains. Our engineers are literally leading chip research around the world right now. But 
we are not building our ecosystem here we are not committing that money we are just talking about it the question for india isn't whether china's machine works the question is do we actually want to be independent or we are happy importing forever while saying make in india at speeches honestly this china story is just a surface level there is so much happening behind the scenes that nobody really talks about if you want to understand how euv machines are built how these machines even exist and why on earth only one company in the world makes it in a simpler easy to understand way tell me in the comments subscribe if you don't want to miss that and thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one